greetings and salutations fellow gamers Lukey P here with another episode of Supreme Ruler Ultimate with Brazil now we did earlier today record an episode which then proceeded to get completely screwed up by my video recorder um, when it was being processed so you could hear me talking but the pictures were often out of sync um, and yeah it wasn't really that instructive as a let's play it was more like a let's listen to Lukey P talk about what he's doing while the screen's not showing it so uh, I'm going to have to replace that episode with this one in effect which is a quick recap of what's going on so this will probably be a pretty short episode now um, the country which was here which is uh, not Peru it is Ecuador Ecuador had evidently taken a little bit of Peru there which we've now got but Ecuador has now ceased to be um, so we fought a relatively quick war against it basically I think we were uh, starting from I can't remember where we were starting from but we basically marched down they had a fair few number of units but nothing that substantive they killed I think one of our units um, an artillery just because they called it out in the open and that was it we wiped out their entire military, conquered their capital, started taking different parts of their country, and they surrendered shortly after. Um, we did also get our money up at the end of the episode I recorded to 90 billion, which uh, was amazing. Uh, what we then did with that is we now have a huge stock of industrial goods again. Um, because I went and bought about 10 billion worth of industrial goods from China and paid them about 7 billion for that. Uh, so that was a good deal. Um, selling some stuff on the market still, making uh, some okay margins on petroleum and uh, consumer goods. Um, we are struggling with our relations so we're now neutral once again we had gone axis leaning for a time because of our trading uh, with other countries in the world I'm just going to turn that population filter off so it doesn't all appear red um, due to our trading with some of the axis powers we'd gone red for a time so the UK wasn't liking us I've got to be honest I'm not sure why they've now dropped down to cold given that um, uh, we are trading regularly with them and at not too bad prices so let's just offer to trade a bit with them while we're going through this update China is still pretty okay with us uh, the problem is is that their desire to pay at top dollar for various things has gone down so you see there that's only 54% profit margin on consumer goods um, and it's not much better on petrol in fact it's even worse on petrol so we'll probably trade them a little bit of consumer goods but nothing dramatic just because it's not good enough margins uh, the USSR are still alright on buying consumer goods from us But they again, they've descended to neutral and this is a reflection of the wars we've been involved in. Um, Germany pretty much always wants to buy consumer goods because they very rapidly sell it to their population and go to zero. And when people are at zero, that puts a real premium on things. So that's, up, that's three times roughly. Again, it's not as good as we've had in the past, but we will take it. Italy... Um, they're on all right terms with us. I think we might be running out of consumer goods to sell at this rate. So let's just, yeah, that's a pretty good price, but they often back out of deals Italy. They reject things they just offered us. 
And Hungary hasn't been too bad a trading partner on consumer goods now either. So that's all right. Um, so yeah, back to our country. Now we've done a little bit of trading. Uh, so what's our strategy at the moment? Well, we were building up Colombia, having taken it over. So what I did basically is I scrapped most of the um, infrastructure in the country. And I did show on my Let's Play a rather good way of doing that. So as well as just going around and scrapping particular things by clicking on them and deciding, you know, hey, I don't want that uh, oil field or whatever um, because it's in a low production area or I just don't want it. The other way you can do it is you can go into your resources screen. You can click on facility controls and you can see how many you've got of certain things. So for example, if I had some industrial micro, if they were being scrapped, they would show up there. If they were active, I could actually scrap them from this menu by pressing that button, which I did a few times on the Let's Play uh, because I couldn't spot every single little uh, uh, facility. But basically, I'm capturing population, not production capacity. I don't need any more of anything basically I'm fine on agriculture um, I haven't even got a single agriculture plant that's literally just the agriculture my population could produce from the land and I'm telling them to only produce at 105% of demand that they could produce easily over double that um, rubber is absolutely fine and I've still got a bunch of them turned off so about a third of them are turned off uh, timber again I haven't actually got any running uh, and I'm only at what oh, probably a third maybe because I've matched that's just again that's our population working the land there's no specific production facilities oil is going great uh, I have turned a few of these off um, I did turn a few back on towards the end of the last episode because a few more folks are buying oil so they're buying it direct from us at the rate of um, kind of 400,000 barrels a day plus direct trading on top coal is fine metal ore is fine uranium we haven't got any electric power is is very very good still um, yes that's crept up a fair bit but we are researching improve power grid 2 which in yeah, probably another half year or so will pop up and increase our power production by 50 percent which would put us up to what 750 uh, probably a bit higher probably nearer to 900 actually is that right yeah could be nearer to 900 by that point um industrial goods we can produce more of we're only got two active of 20 um and we are paying out 17,000 tons because we are constructing things which brings me to military goods so I turned this on one of them and basically found that they'd only produce like a couple of hundred whereas our military is using a lot more so I built down here three uh, military good facilities which are incredibly expensive as it turns out so they're about a billion each and basically my construction costs are 235 million per go or per tick so um yeah it turns out if you're building those those are really expensive and it's all right to do it when you've got 90 billion in the bank um but if you're just starting out really don't build military production it's uh it's really expensive and quite frankly it would almost be better to buy it off the market except in that i don't know what the market availability is going to be like and I am expecting as I conquer more and more that more and more countries will not want to trade with me. Which is a shame because as you'll know if you've watched my Let's Play episodes, I really enjoy the trading aspect of the game. And consumer goods are real cash cow. You'll notice that our population is demanding more and more of this. Uh, which is fine. So as the prices start to drop off in other countries, I'm selling more to my population at a markup of nearly a hundred percent on the production costs um, and that is great because I basically make profit on that so if I look at my 
if I look at my production costs, it cost me 181 million to produce everything. I'm selling it to my population for 199 million. So I'm making nearly 20 million profit there. And on top of it, if you think about it, of what I'm making, I'm exporting a huge amount. So I'm exporting 1.3 million barrels of oil a day. And the maths, 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 about 6K ish of consumer goods a day. So that, you know, it adds up plus all that electricity as well. So, um, you know, that stuff I can sell and makes me good profit and I'm profitable and alone on selling to my country, even if I couldn't sell abroad and I could cut production way back. So if the market completely collapsed, I could cut that back to be equal to demand and I could cut that back to be equal to demand and I'd make even more money. Um, but at the moment we are carrying this very large loss, 264 million a day. And the reason we are carrying that large loss is because we're spending 235 million on construction, which probably shouldn't last for much longer. Um, long term tactic, probably medium term tactic actually, uh, which I spoke a bit about um, in the episode, which didn't record is I'm looking around and thinking once I've taken the rest of Central America, which probably isn't that long away. I mean, Peru should go pretty easily. Argentina might be a bit more of a battle, but I can park my units directly on the border. Maybe send Marines across, try and take their capital. If I take this around here, this is a large part of their country. It may cripple their desire to fight. I hope it does because if it doesn't you may find for example I conquer that and they decide to shove their capital down here somewhere and I'm like I've got to march across their entire country to take it um, but what I was looking at it's a possible option is um, over here in the this part of the world so if I look at the people I've got cows as belly against for some reason, Australia, the United Kingdom, and New Guinea, I've got absolutely loads against. New Guinea is just here. It's a colony. It's only going to have defensive units. If I can get some Marines over there and conquer that, that is potentially a very, um, a very helpful stopping off point because I could completely militarize this with land production and the likes and use it just to stop off in effect and start conquering this area around here and my big prize i've got my eyes on is this east indies so their population is nearly 79 million right mine is only 58 million so i'd be or 59 million rounding so i'd be well over doubling my population which would be brilliant in terms of then having an internal market to sell to um, and also this thing's a colony which means it doesn't build offensive units it will have garrisons um, but that's it so I'm starting to build up some of my naval forces so we've got uh, four more naval productions going down there uh, we've got our various units there and we should have somewhere sailing around the coast yeah there are some of our troop transports there should also be there's some more. I'm looking for the flagship of the fleet. Let me see if I can find the ship, the flagship. There it is. Where are you? It's on the move. So I like this. This is a. Um, is it running out of? No, it hasn't run out of supplies. Got absolutely loads of supplies. Um, it damages for five hundred and thirty at fifty four. And I think we said a few episodes ago. I just built that because I thought it was kind of cool to have a flagship called the Queen Elizabeth, being as I'm English. Um, so yeah, we will do that. We are building up here a load of marines. So we are. Um, 
we've basically queued up 30 marines to build here which will take a while because we're not using our full capacity we could use 15 build slots and we're only using five and the reason we're doing that is um I want them to be near here because I'm thinking I'm either going to load them up into some of the civilian transports I've got or, or just see if I can embark them by sea and send them themselves but I'm kind of wanting to send over here and get a foothold in this part of the world because this has got a lot of population hopefully we don't alienate China by um, playing in its backyard but um, we'll see we'll see um, and so that's where we're at um, so I know that's not as long as a normal episode but um, that's just unfortunately the price of my uh, recording software misbehaving um, yeah so we'll wrap it there um, as always thank you very much for watching I'm Lukey P and I will see you again soon <laughs>